This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. So I know 2020 didn't shake out in terms of scheduling for Razorback football, but I did not see a lot of complaints last night from Razorback fans. I saw a lot of excitement. What do you think about the outlook for Razorbacks in 2024 based on the schedule that was presented last night with home and away opponents? Yeah, good morning, guys. It's a, it's a fun day because um, every fan base probably has something to discuss, the, the pros and the cons. Uh, I saw somebody describe it as it, Alabama, uh, excuse me, Arkansas did not get a uh, elbow from the top rope from the SEC. But I have to say, I really thought they would wind up with Kentucky, which was originally on the schedule, which they played fewest of any team uh, from the crossover, um, or Vanderbilt um, after what happened to them in 2020. But they got Tennessee. So I do think maybe uh, if you have both of the Mississippi schools, um, that maybe getting Vanderbilt on top of that would have been seen as, um, you know, uh, unbalanced. So who knows what Tennessee will be in 2024. We know that in 2022, with Hendon Hooker at quarterback, they were a dynamo that beat Alabama. So I would say that um, getting Texas at home was probably, you know, a little bit of a uh, lull from the SEC, which, which was wonderful. But all in all, I mean, Alabama is off the schedule, so I just think, I just think it's it probably doesn't rank in the top half of the difficulty of the SEC, somewhere around the midpoint. Mm-hmm. You and I had the same line of thinking about Kentucky, being that they hadn't been here since 2012, being that they weren't scheduled to be here in 2024. But I want to ask you about the, the prospect of potential, better potential wins versus big time matchups. Kentucky on paper would be an easier football game. Tennessee's going to have Nico Ilmoeva at quarterback. He's a five-star young man out of Cali. He's got one of the best arms out of high school I've ever seen. He's probably going to have a pretty good successful year or two in Tennessee. So how do you, Tom, looking at Arkansas' schedule year after year, how do you balance what fans want at home versus the just the, the prospect of winning those games? How do you look at that? Well, exactly. And here's the thing. No matter what you get, there's going to be a, a meat grinder element to your schedule, um, and how you know how you deal with injuries and um, other teams are dealing with their injuries plays a part in, in everything. Um, it's hard to project two years down the line because you know a year before Josh Heupel got to Tennessee, uh, if, if you got, draw them with Jeremy Pruitt at uh, coaching, then that's a good draw. So uh, Arkansas in 2020, uh, Tennessee was already on the schedule, but at that time, that was a good game for them. Tennessee in 2024, a tougher game. Um, and, you know, your strength of schedule is going to be fine. If you have one or two losses, you've got a good shot at making the uh, college football playoff in 2024. I like Arkansas' schedule. Um, you kept all your trophy games, and you have um, one of them at home in LSU. And I did not anticipate that game going away, nor did I anticipate the A&M game going away. So you have LSU, A&M, and Missouri – all your trophy games, that's good. You wind up with both of the, of the Mississippi schools, which I, I thought was, was good for them. Where will Auburn be, I think, is a big question in 2024. You won on the road at Auburn last year. Uh, will Hugh Freeze immediately find the quarterback, get his offense rolling, and, and be a tough out in 2024? Really, you, you roll the dice. You don't know what teams are going to project to in two years. Uh, you would think, okay, Brian Kelly and LSU, they were strong this year. 2024, they'll be tough. Auburn will be tougher in 2024. Tennessee could be as well. Um, and so I, I, I just think that – I just think it's an equitable schedule, and I think Arkansas fans should be happy that you've got LSU at home that year, Texas at home that year, and Ole Miss at home. That's, that's a pretty good home schedule. So when you – it seems like an impossible task what the SEC was trying to put together. I, I like the criteria – uh, splitting up and making sure uh, Texas and OU were on everyone's schedule, one or the other. Uh, the competitive balance, we talked about that yesterday and how they made sure you played some of the top four and the bottom four teams and a lot in the middle. Um, given overall grade, I thought I thought this was an impossible task that Greg Sankey and his staff had to pull together uh, to, to really balance this out over 16 schedules. Um, I agree with you, Tommy. Um, and I think, you know, Mark Womack, I, we know, was the point man in 2020. And if you're an Arkansas fan, you have a beef with that. I mean, it's just it's a legit beef. 
it felt like Arkansas was, you know, in a down trough after the Morris years. And they're like, well, let's just go ahead and give, you know, them these really tough games. Uh, so in this, in this scenario, it's, yeah, I think they did about the best they could. I heard Greg McElroy last night saying that he thought LSU got a pretty generous schedule. And, I mean, what is a generous schedule? Is Van- Vanderbilt is on your schedule? You know, and, and honestly, if, you, if you're on the east and you look the other side, if you have maybe Mississippi State without Mike Leach, are they going to go into a, a little bit of a lull? You know, maybe they'll be a good defensive team with Zach Arnett, but can they, you know, manage the same offensive numbers? I don't know. But if you're on the East, I mean, drawing Arkansas is not never thought of as like a horrible draw, if, if we're being honest. Yep. So uh, I, I, I just think that it, it was a, a tough task, and I, I did like their criteria. And when you break it down the way they did, everybody gets OU or Texas, okay? So that gives it's – it's a perfect number that uh, each of those teams gets one of the two. Um, and then you, you kept your, your arch rivalries. And it's interesting, I thought that at the top of the show when they said protecting the rivalries, um, and they went Auburn, Alabama, of course. Uh, and they, I think they did A&M in Texas. Uh, and then Arkansas LSU is considered like a top rivalry, but it's not played on the Thanksgiving weekend. Anyway, all in all, not a bad job. Everybody's got uh, a difficult schedule. And I think when 2025 uh, schedule rolls around, we're going to see either nine teams or um, 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 maybe a set uh, number of years with an 18, but I really think they'll try to go back to the 19. And we were talking about that earlier. Is there a need for nine? I mean, now that we see the schedule in front of us, we see these matchups. I mean, is nine games going to put your, your fourth or fifth team securely in the playoff? I mean, we look at these games, sure seems like there's enough strength of, of uh, competition here that uh, I'm not sure how much better you'd get with nine. I agree with you. And and I do believe that they'll want to have something in place before they get to 2024. So it's not like they're going to be able to view 2024 as like, okay, this is our, our, our test, test run. I think they're going to have to come up with something before you play the 2024 schedule. Um, and yes, I agree with you that um, strength of schedule will be fine no matter what. And because of the mandatory uh, autonomy five um, designation on these schedules, that you know every SEC school will be fine if you can win two. If you can only have two losses, you got a good shot at making the playoff. And sometimes I think Bama or Georgia, um, if they lose to each other and have another one or two, they have a chance to make the top twelve. So um, uh, it it's I think ultimately it's going to boil down to whether they can negotiate uh, more with their broadcast partners to give them that ninth game. Um, and that will probably, you know, follow the money. I think that will probably dictate whether or not they, they ultimately go to a nine game slate. But I do feel like, you know, if you put your finger up in the wind, that was what might ha- happen for 2024. And it didn't because they did not, you know, uh, um, negotiate more money from their broadcast partners, which will be all the ESPN, ABC company or family at that time. Um, so I do think. I think ultimately they they will wind up at nine at some point. Tom, who's more suited for the SEC, Texas or Oklahoma? Wow, you know, great question. Oklahoma coming off a a, real, a bad year, comparatively speaking. I'd have to say that the Texas is better suited. Um, they gave Alabama a, a really good game at home last year. Um, they seem to be much improved from when Arkansas spanked them real good um, in twenty twenty one. So I would say Texas is, uh, and OU, they're going to have to step up to the plate. I mean, I think uh, the analysts that you saw last night were spot on that uh, Oklahoma got a tougher schedule in 2024. And so it's, it's um, uh, their recruiting is going to have to pick up, and I think it will because they're kind of in the SEC footprint now. But I don't think they, they, they're going to stand out the way they did in the Big 12. I, I think – They've got a long road ahead of them to, to you know, get on equal footing with the biggest powers in the league. The Oklahoma Sooners finished with a losing record last year for the first time in 20-plus seasons, and now they're joining mm-hmm. an even better conference. Venables is not Lincoln Riley. He's not Bob Stoops. What makes you think he can actually get it done in Norman? 
Well, I'm not convinced. I mean, he, he spent such a long time as a defensive coordinator. They got to get the right uh, personnel, the right schemes in on offense for recruiting purposes and just for being able to outscore people. And honestly, you know, their defense was not up to, I think, Venable standards last year. So um, I'm not convinced. Um, and that's why the league continues to morph. And so, yeah, Mississippi State was respectable with Mike Leach. They had some huge wins beating LSU in their first year and, and so on. And they had a good season last year. But, I, you know, there's no, there's no template that says Zach Arnett is going to produce a big-time winner in Mississippi State. And honestly, on a year-to-year basis, there's going to be four or five fan bases that are tremendously disappointed with how their teams fare. Um, and it's just inevitable when you have this many good teams in one league. Yeah. No one's uh, paying attention or feeling sorry for Vanderbilt, but you look at their schedule. Now, they do get Bama, Tennessee, and Texas all at home, but they do have to play Bama, Tennessee, and Texas road trips to uh, LSU, uh, Kentucky, Auburn, and, and Missouri. You could easily make a case at Vanderbilt, as downtrodden as they've been historically. They've got about as steep a climb and, and rough a road as, as anyone, even though their expectations are, are as low as anyone's in the league. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm looking, kind of looking over all the schedules, and everybody has got tough games. And, you know, Vanderbilt traditionally is has been on the low end, uh, the James Franklin years being the exception. And they were pretty good the first couple of years at Derek, Derek Mason, but they have they've dropped off. Um, now, if you're Florida last year and, and you lose to Vanderbilt, um, it, it just goes to show you that they're not just a, a you know, they're not a joke. Uh, you have to – be prepared and, and be ready to face a Vanderbilt team. So I, you know, <clears throat> no matter who you, no matter who you are or where you are in this conference, you've got tough games, and it doesn't matter if you're Vanderbilt or Missouri or Oklahoma or Arkansas. You, you got a tough road in 2024. Yeah, Tom, always good to visit with you, and uh, we will catch up again real soon and uh, talk about it more next week here on the Morning Rush. Yeah, sounds good, and a little College World Series action will be yeah. fun to talk about this week as yeah. well. All right, happy Father's Day weekend. Oh, yeah. Happy Same Father's Day, yeah. Tom. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bet Online is your number one source for all your championship finals info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and the latest matchup reports for this year's NBA and Stanley Cup Finals. Bet Online is your sports intel headquarters this season, as we have you covered for all your insider sports wagering needs, from baseball and hockey to MLB, UFC, and boxing. The fastest and easiest way to get all your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your home. Get in the action today. Head over to our website or use your mobile device to join and be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive 50% bonus on your first deposit. That's B L E A V. Bet online where the game starts.